Hi students, today I am going to deal with the topic visible spectrophotometer. I am going to deal with the topic visible spectrophotometer. The learning objective of this presentation is after completion of this presentation you will be able to understand what is visible spectroscopy what is visible spectrophotometer what are the components that are used in visible spectrophotometers the construction the working principle and the applications working principle and the applications of visible spectrophotometer visible spectroscopy once again i would like to define what is spectroscopy spectroscopy is the measurement and interpretation of electromagnetic radiation absorbed or emitted when molecules or atoms or ions of a sample moves from one energy state to another energy state visible spectroscopy visible spectroscopy is a type of absorption spectroscopy in which light of visible region which ranges from 400 nanometers to 800 nanometers is absorbed by the molecules which results in excitation of electrons from ground state to higher energy state from ground state to higher energy state so visible spectroscopy is a type of absorption spectroscopy in which light of visible region from 400 nanometers to 800 nanometers is absorbed by the molecules which result in the excitation of the electrons from the ground state to higher energy state let us see the visible spectrum visible spectrum forms a part of the electromagnetic spectrum which ranges from gamma rays to radio waves a very small portion of the electromagnetic spectrum makes up the visible radiation and its wavelength is ranging from 400 nanometers to 700 nanometers the visible spectrum ranges from 400 to 700 nanometers and uh, the different colors are they are represented by vip gr vip gr what is spectrophotometer spectrophotometers are instruments which are working at wavelength where the absorbance is maximum such wavelength of the radiation whose absor absorbance is maximum is called lambda max is called lambda max spectrophotometers are instruments which are working at a wavelength where the absorbance is maximum and such wavelength of the radiation whose absorbance is maximum is called lambda max with the help of the spectrophotometer what we can do with the help of the spectrophotometer we can have qualitative analysis as well as quantitative analysis both the analysis can be carried out using spectrophotometer qualitative and quantitative analysis of any type of sample the sample may be either a solid or a liquid or a gas it uh, it may be colored or colorless it may be colored or colorless the general block diagram of a spectrophotometer the spectrophotometer consists of a light source or the radiant source then the collimating system we have the monochromator it may be a prism or a grating then uh, you have the entrance uh, exit slit then the cuvette or the sample holder where the sample is placed in that cuvette and then we have the photo detector the detection system and the display system or the readout device as you know the basic block diagram of any uh, spectrophotometer is your chemical information source then we have the transducer and then uh, we ha have our signal conditioner and the display or readout device display or readout device 
then coming to the components of visible spectrophotometer what are the components of visible spectrometer the components of visible spectrometer spectrophotometer are source of radiant energy collimating lens collimating system in other words monochromator system sample holder or container to hold the sample detector system of collecting transmitted radiation then suitable amplifier or readout device these are the components of a visible spectrophotometer source of radiant energy collimating system monochromator system sample holder or container to hold sample detector system of collecting transmitted radiation then suitable amplifier or readout device suitable amplifier or readout device the instrumentation of visible spectrometer if you see the figure you can understand the different components which have which we have discussed earlier the first one is the light source or radiant source then we have the collimating system or collimating lens then we have the dispersing element which is nothing but the monochromator which consists of an entrance slit we have the dispersing device and the exit slit together forms the monochromator then we have the sample holder or the sample container or it is also called as a cuvette then we have the photo detector we have the detector which may be either a photo multiplier tube or a photo diode and then we have the display system which is the readout device display system which is the readout device so these are the basic blocks of or the instrumentation of visible spectro photometer coming to the first one the source of radiant energy the source of radiant energy what is the requirement of an ideal radiation source the basic requirements of an ideal radiation source are the source should be stable and should not allow any fluctuations it should emit light of continuous spectrum of high and uniform intensity over the entire wavelength region in which it is used so its spectrum should it should emit light of continuous spectrum then it should be having sufficient energy sufficient radiant energy or the it should provide incident light of sufficient intensity for the transmitted energy to be detected at the end of the optical path end of the optic path and it should not show fatigue on continued use when it is used continuously it should not show fatigue so these are the Uh, requirements of an ideal radiation source the requirements of an ideal radiation source then for visible radiation source for visible radiation the sources required are uh, we use the common so that is a tungsten halogen lamp the tungsten halogen lamp its construction is similar to a household lamp it consists of evacuated you have a glass envelope inside which we have a tungsten filament and it is encompassed in a halogen filled capsule around that filament the bulb contains a filament of tungsten fixed in evacuated condition and then it is filled with inert gas the filament can be heated up up to 3000 degree kelvin beyond this tungsten starts sublime sublimating beyond the 3000 degree kelvin it begins to sublime tungsten begins to sublime so it is used with when polychromatic light is required polychromatic light of different colors to prevent this along with inert gas some amount of halogen is introduced usually iodine so when this is being sublimate when the tungsten filament is being uh, uh, evaporated and it sublimes over the surface of the glass envelope uh, so when iodine is introduced that is a halogen gas is, is also uh, introduced into the evacuated chamber sublimated form of tungsten reacts with iodine to form tungsten iodine iodine complex this tungsten iodine gas or the complex it migrates towards the hot filament where it decomposes and tungsten get deposited tungsten gets deposited one of the demerits of this uh, tungsten halogen lamp is it emits a major portion of its radiant energy in near ir region of the spectrum near ir region of the spectrum then the next part of your uh, 
instrumentation of visible spectrophotometer is the collimating system. The radiation that is being emitted by the source is collimated. Collimating means making the ray parallel. It is collimated by lenses, by mirrors and slits. We have we use these all these three. The lenses, the mirrors and the slit to make your radiant energy. The radiant energy will be always in the dispersed. It is in the diverted. It, it goes in different directions. But, but we want to focus the uh, ray on to the on to the monochromata. So, in order to do that, the radiation emitted by the source is collimated. It is made parallel by lenses, mirrors and slits. Lenses. Lenses are materials which are used for the, the lens, uh, the materials which are used for making the lenses, they must be transparent to the radiation being used. Ordinary silicate glass transmits between 350 to 3000 nanometers and is suitable for visible and near IR region. It is suitable for visible and near IR region. And quartz or fused silica is used as a material for lenses to work below 300 nanometers. Quartz or fused silica. Quartz or fused silica is used as a material for lenses to work below 300 nanometers. Then then the mirrors. Mirrors are used to reflect focus or collimate light beams in spectrophotometers. They are used to reflect or to focus or to collimate. So, to minimize the light loss, mirrors are eliminated on their front surfaces. They are eliminated on their front surfaces. Then we have the slit. Slit is an important device in dissolving polychromatic radiation into monochromatic radiation. So, slit is an important device in, re in resolving polychromatic radiation into monochromatic radiation. To achieve this, entrance slit and exit slits are used. The width, width of the slit plays a very important role in the resolution of the polychromatic radiation. In the resolution of polychromatic radiation. Then, we have the monochromators. Monochromator is a device which is used to isolate the radiation of desired wavelength from wavelength of continuous spectra. From the wavelength of continuous spectra. Following types of monochromatic devices that are used are filters, then we have prisms and gratings. So, monochromator is used to isolate the radiation of desired wavelength from the wavelength of continuous spectra. From the wavelength of continuous spectra. Filters and prisms and gratings are the most common monochromatic devices. What are filters? Selection of filter is usually done on compromise between peak transmittance and band pass width. The former should be as high as possible. The peak transmittance must be as high as possible and the band pass width must be as narrow as possible. That is the selection. That means you can selectively filter out the unwanted you can remove and the wanted uh, radiation can be extracted. This can be possible by using a filter. Filters are of two types absorption filters and interference filters. Absorption filters they work by selective absorption of unwanted radiation and transmits the radiation which is required. Okay. It's selective. It works by selective absorption of unwanted radiation and transmit the radiation which is required. Like example of uh, absorption filters are glass and gelatin filters. Then the interference filters. Interference filters work on interference phenomenon. Causes rejection of unwanted wavelengths by selective reflection. Here we use the principle of reflection. Unwanted wavelengths by selective reflection. Interference filters. Most commonly, we are going to use interference filters in spectro in ultraviolet spectrophotometry. The works this interference filters they work on interference phenomena, which causes rejection of unwanted wavelength by selective reflection. It is constructed by using two parallel glass plates, which are silvered internally, and separated by thin film of dielectric material of different refractive indexes. 
the materials may be either cad calcium fluoride silicon and uh, magnesium fluoride these filters have a band pass of 10 to 15 nanometers with peak transmittance of 40 to 60 percent the merits of the interference filters are they provide greater transmittance and narrow band pass 10 to 15 nanometers as compared to absorption filters and they are inexpensive and additional filters can be used to cut off undesired wavelength additional filters can be used to cut off undesired undesired wavelength then we have the mono, other type of monochromata that is the prisms prism is made from glass quartz or fused silica quartz or fused silica is the choice of material of uv spectrum quartz or fused silica we for uh, visible region we are going to use for visible region we are going to use the glass prism okay so our our uh, uh, topic of discussion is visible spectroscopy so we are going to use glass prisms quartz and fused silica are used for uh, for uh, extracting uv spectrum when white light is passed through the glass prism dispersion of polychromatic light in rainbow occurs now by rotation of prism different wavelengths of spectrum can be made to pass through the exit slit of the sample on the sample the effective wavelength depends on the dispersive power of the prism and the prism material and the optical angle of the prism so you want a specific wavelength you can rotate the uh, prism you can rotate the prism to obtain only a particular wavelength radiation of particular wavelength can be obtained then we have other type of uh, monochromata which is grating grating are most effective one in converting a polychromatic light to monochromatic they are used for converting polychromatic light to monochromatic as a resolution of plus or minus 0.1 nanometers could be achieved by using gratings they are most commonly used for spectrophotometers because they have very good resolution power so when compared to prism grating is mostly used gratings are of two types diffraction grating and transmission grating diffraction grating and transmission grating what is diffraction grating diffraction grating more refined dispersion of light is obtained by means of diffraction grating these consists of large number of parallel lines or they are called as grooves about 15000 to 30000 per inch is ruled on highly polished surface of aluminum these gratings are replica made from master grating by coating the original master grating with an epoxy resin and are removed after setting each grating element uh, acts as a single prism so these are the it, uh, the um, the diffraction grating it is uh, it is most refined dispersion of light is possible using this diffraction grating to make the surface re reflective a deposit of aluminum is made on the surface in order to minimize uh, great to greater amounts of scattered radiation and appearance of unwanted radiation of other spectral orders the gratings are blazed to concentrate the radiation into a single order into a single order then what is transmission grating what is transmission grating it is similar to diffraction grating but refraction takes place instead of reflection refraction produces reinforcement this occurs when radiation transmitted through grating reinforces with the partially refracted radiation these are the two types of uh, gratings refraction grating and transmission grating depending upon our application we are going to use the gratings then what are the advantages of gratings grating gives higher and linear dispersion compared to prism monochromators and gratings can be used over wide wavelength ranges they can be used over wide wavelength ranges and gratings can be constructed with materials like aluminium which is resistant to atmospheric moisture it doesn't get rusted uh, gratings can be constructed with materials like aluminium which is resistant to atmospheric moisture they provide light of very narrow wavelength 
no loss of energy due to absorption there is no loss of energy due to absorption so these are the advantages of gratings when compared to prisms then the next next part of the next component of your uh, visible spectrum photometer is your sample container or the sample cell or it is called the sample holder the cells or the cubits are used for handling liquid samples the cells may be either rectangular or cylindrical in nature color corrected fused glass is used to for visible region for visible region we are going to use colored corrected fused glass is used for the visible region the surface of the absorption cells must be kept scrupulously clean no fingerprints or blo or uh, blotches should be present on the cell this this will uh, uh, cause errors so the uh, surface of the glass the glass cubits or the cells must be clean cleaning is carried out by washing with distilled water or with dilute alcohol or acetone dilute alcohol or acetone then coming to the next one is your detectors detectors are devices which convert light energy into electrical signals they they are the devices which convert the light energy into electrical signals that are displayed on the readout devices the when the transmitted radiation falls on the detector it determines the intensity of the radiation absorbed by the sample there are different types of dis detectors which we are using and uh, uh, the, in in absorption spectroscopy or spectrophotometers we have the three basic types that is barrier layer cell or photovoltaic cells they are called or photo tube second one is the photo tubes or photo emissive tubes third one is the photo multiplier tubes so requirement of an ideal detector the requirements of an ideal detector are it should give quantitative response it should give quantitative response then it should not have high sensitivity and low noise level it should have high sensitivity and low noise level it should have a short response time it should provide signal or response quantity quantitative to wide spectrum of radiation received wide spectrum of radiation received so the requirements of an ideal detectors are it should give quantitative response it should have high sensitivity and low noise levels it should have a short response time it should provide signal or response quantitative to wide spectrum of radiation to wide spectrum of radiation the first one is your barrier cell or photovoltaic cell the barrier cell or uh, the photo voltaic cell the detectors the barrier cells or the photovoltaic cells are detectors which have a very thin fil, uh, film metallic layer coated with silver or gold and acts as an electrode it also has a metal base plate which acts as another electrode these two layers are separated by semiconductor layers of selenium when uh, a sufficient voltage is applied between these two anode and cathode it begins to conduct uh, and uh, photo current begins to flow through the circuit so this is the working of your photo voltaic cells then photo tubes or photo emissive tubes photo tubes or photo emissive tubes consists of evacuated glass tube with photo cathode it is made up of a light sensitive cathode called photo cathode and a collector anode will be there the surface of the photo cathode is coated with a layer of element like cesium silver oxide or mixture of them when radiant energy falls on the photosensitive cathode electrons are emitted which are attracted towards the anode causing the current to flow through the external circuit more sensitive compared to barrier layer cells and therefore these are widely used because of the high sensitivity and when compared to photovoltaic cells photo emissive tubes or photo tubes are used then coming to the next one is your photo multiplier tubes the photo multiplier tubes uh, the, the principle employed in this detector is that multiplication of photo electrons by uh, secondary emission of electrons multiplied your uh, electrons will be multiplied the number of electrons will be increasing photo electrons by secondary emission of electrons 
in a vacuum tube a primary photocathode is fixed which receives radiation from the sample in a vacuum tube a primary photocathode is fixed which receives radiation from the sample some 8 to 10 diodes are fixed each with increasing potential of 75 to 100 volts higher than preceding one okay one day di several diodes are placed the construction as shown in the figure when you see the figure here in the next uh, slide you have a figure where you have the photocathode and then you have series of diodes are there they are used as a multipliers so some 10 8 to 10 diodes are fixed each with increasing potential of about 75 to 100 volts suppose first one is having 100 volts then the second one will be having 200 volts the third one will be having 300 volts so you are increasing uh, incrementing by 100 volts from one diode to next diode so nearer the last diode uh, you are going to fix an anode or a collector electron collector so your signal will be your uh, photo electrons will be the emission second due, due to secondary emission the number of electrons photo electrons are increasing thereby photo current increases photo multiplier is extremely sensitive to light and is best suited where weaker or low radiation is required weaker or low radiation is required depending upon the monochromatics Uh, or the that is the filters or dispersing devices used to isolate and transmit a narrow beam of radiant energy from the incident light determines whether the instrument is called as a photometer or a spectro photometer. Spectro photometers are used here here to detect the percentage transmittance of light radiation when light of certain intensity is passed through the sample. so we are going to use the spectrophotometer because if if you are if you are if instrument is measuring the intensity of the radiation then it is your it is called as a photometer and if it if it measures the uh, if the instrument isolate and transmit a narrow beam of radiant energy from the incident light determines whether the instrument is classified as a photometer or a spectrophotometer uh, spectrophotometers are used to detect the percentage transmittance of light radiation percentage transmittance you are going to determine whereas if you are going to determine the intensity of the radiation we uh, we call it as photometers both uh, Uh, the spectrophotometers can be classified into two types they are single and double beam spectrophotometers they are classified as single and double uh, best classification of spectrophotometers are of two types the first one is single beam spectrophotometers and the next one is double beam spectrophotometers the single beam spectrophotometer we have seen we have seen in the earlier uh, uh, classes or in the previous uh, session which i have taught we have seen the uh, components of now we have seen the components of a visible spectrophotometer that is represented in this figure this is the diagram of a single beam spectrophotometer where the first part is your radiation source then we have the collimating lens we have the collimating lens then we have the diaphragm then we have the monochromator the focusing convex lens and then the cuvet and we have the photocell or the photo detector and the readout device and the readout device so so what is happening in this uh, single beam spectrophotometer light from the source is collected by the collimating lens light from the source is collected by the collimating lens and allowed to fall on the monochromator it is allowed to fall on the uh, monochromator once again i will show you the figure of the uh, single beam spectrophotometer now i will explain how this works light from the monochromatic uh, right from the source the radiant source if if you are if you want the, the construction of a visible spectrophotometer and uh, ultraviolet spectrophotometer are both same only differs in the uh, radiant source if you if you want uh, ra ultraviolet radiation you go for deuterium lamps and if you want visible radiation we go for incandescent lamps that is the tungsten lamp, uh, lamp is used so the light source uh, emits light 
in the visible region tungsten lamp is used so light from the source it is collected by the collimating lens and it is allowed to fall on the monochromator for each radiation incident radiation on the monochromator we are getting only radiation of one particular wavelength only in one lambda in other words in one lambda this monochromatic light is passed on to the sample kept in the cuvette okay light from the radiant source after it is collimated and passed through the diaphragm it falls on the mon on the monochromator the prism is used as a monochromator here uh, what does it do it produces uh, we are getting only radiation of one particular wavelength only this monochromatic light when it is passed on to the sample which is kept in the cuvette where some of the some part of the radiation is absorbed and remaining is transmitted which passes through focusing lenses and falls on the photocell which passes through the focusing lens and falls in the photocell the photocell what does it do it converts this radiation to current and optical density or absorbance the photocell converts this radiation to current and optical density or absorbance so the value of the lambda of radiation can be changed by rotating the monochromator you can uh, produce the radiation of different wavelength for one radiation it has one lambda one value of lambda okay so light from the source is collected by the collimating lens this is the working principle of a single beam spectrophotometer uh, light from the source is collected by the collimating lens and it is allowed to fall on the monochromator for each radiation that is incident on the monochromator we are getting only radiation of one wavelength only in one lambda that is one lambda this monochromator light is passed on the sample which is kept in the cuvette where some part of the radiation is absorbed and remaining is transmitted which passes through the focusing lens and it falls on the photocell the photocell converts this radiation to current and optical density or absorbance the value of wavelength that is lambda of the radiation can be changed by rotating the monochromator when you rotate the monochromator the value of the wavelength changes so when we plot a graph when we plot a graph taking absorbance taking absorbance versus wavelength absorbance on y axis and wavelength on x axis we get a waveform of this pattern so for a single beam spectroscope photometer value of the wavelength where the absorbance is maximum you go, you go, you get a graph of this pattern okay so if the value of the wavelength where the absorbance is maximum is known as lambda max which is the characteristic property of the compound or the sample under test and gives the qualitative analysis of the sample maximum absorbance will give you the uh, the peak value or the lambda max will will uh, it is the characteristic property of the compound and gives the qualitative analysis of the sample while knowing the value of uh, absorbance we can found, find out the concentration of the solution using beers lambert's law we already know beers lambert's law the qualitative uh, quantitative analysis is also carried out you can have qualitative analysis as well as quantitative analysis of the sample is carried out okay when you plot a graph by taking absorbance on y axis and uh, uh, wavelength on x axis Uh, you get a graph of this pattern so the value of wavelength where the absorbance is maximum is known as lambda max which is the characteristic property of the compound and gives the qualitative analysis of the sample while knowing the value of absorbance we can find out the concentration of the solution using beers lambert's law thus qualitative analysis of the sample is carried out this is your single beam visible spectrophotometer then coming to the double beam visible spectrophotometer double beam visible spectrometer uh, construction is similar to single beam but only difference is you are using two mirrors 
mirrors or chopper and in other words you can use a chopper also mirror or a chopper uh, after the monochromata the the light coming out of the monochromata the monochromatic radiation is split up into two parts it is split up the beam is split up into two parts that's why it is called double beam spectrophotometer it is called double beam spectrophotometer so the double beam instrument is one in which two beams are formed in space by either by using a u shaped mirror called as beam splitter or a beam chopper is used if it is a chopper it is a circular device one third of the disc is opaque and one third is transparent remaining one third is mirrored it splits the monochromatic beam of light into two beams of equal intensity you are splitting the radiation uh, which is coming from the monochromata into two two halves two directions so this is your double beam spectroscope no, spectrophotometer visible spectrophotometer the only difference in the construction is we are using after the monochromata we are using a mirror which or a beam splitter which splits the beam into two beams of equal intensities the intensity doesn't vary and uh, through uh, light from the source when it is collected by the collimating lens and allowed to pass allowed to fall on the monochromata it produces radiation uh, of only one wavelength or produces radiation of only one wavelength when this monochromatic radiation or light is separated into two beams with the help of mirrors one beam it is passed through the cuvette containing the blank solution and other if it is passed through the cuvette containing sample solution and both finally are incident on the photo detector where some of the radiation is absorbed and remaining is transmitted which passes through the focusing lens and falls on the photo cell photo cell may uh, it may be either a photo cell or a thermocouple where heat is when you are using a thermocouple heat is heat produced is converted into current and optical density or absorbance can be observed the value of the wavelength uh, lambda of a radiation can be changed by rotating the monochromata if you want another another wave, wavelength another radiation radiation of another wavelength you rotate the monochromata that specific radiation can be passed through the uh, as you know through the exit slit it uh, it restricts the uh, radiation or uh, it allows only a radiation of particular wavelength to fall onto the mirror so thereby if you want to observe the nature of another radiation you can move the you can rotate the monochromata so the working of your double beam spectroscopy double beam uh, instrument is one in which you have two beams which are formed in space by a u shaped mirror called as beam splitter or beam chopper the chopper is a device consisting of circular disc one third of the disc is opaque and one third is transparent remaining one third is mirrored it splits the monochromatic beam of light into two beams of equal intensities so light from the source the working is when light from the source is collected by the collimating lens and if it is allowed to fall on the monochromata the monochromata for each radiation incident on the monochromata we are going to get only radiation of one wavelength only in one lambda in one lambda okay so this monochromatic light if it is separated into two beams with the help of mirrors one beam uh, is passed through the cuvette containing sample solution and other it is passed through the cuvette containing blank solution and when both are finally incident on the detector the photo detector can be a thermo thermocouple detector or a photo cell in when we make use of thermocouple detectors thermocouple will uh, the heat will produce Uh, the thermo emf and thermo current begins to flow and this current uh, and optical density uh, it pro produces the photo current produces the uh, current proportional to the intensity of the radiation that is being received by the from the sample so some part of the radiation is absorbed by the sample and remaining is transmitted this transmitted radiation it is made to fall on the photo cell the photo cell produces the current based upon the radiation received received from the sample so when when we plot a graph a value of wavelength for one particular wavelength of radiation we get uh, the transmitted light one wavelength one particular wavelength 
you get uh, you get current for one particular wavelength photo current for one particular wavelength so when we plot a absorbance versus wavelength graph you can observe uh, that the value of wavelength where the absorbance is maximum is known as lambda max which is a characteristic it is a characteristic of property of the compound and each each compound has its own lambda max thereby you can determine by knowing the value of lambda max you can determine what is the uh, compound present in that sample thereby it is it gives a qualitative analysis of the sample while knowing the value of the absorb absorbance we can find out the concentration of the sample using beers lambert's law there exists a linear relationship between absorbance and concentration of the sample already you are getting the absorbance when you are getting the absorbance uh, you uh, you can calculate the you can calculate the concentration of the given sample there thereby you can analyze the sample thus it gives the quantitative analysis of the uh, sample is possible the quantitative analysis of the sample is possible so this is about your double bream spectrophotometer then coming to the advantages advantages of single beam and double beam single beam is simple in construction and it is easy to use and economical these are the advantages of simple single beam they are simple in construction easy to use and economical double beam it facilitates rapid scanning over wide lambda range region it facilitates rapid scanning over wide lambda region fluctuations due to radiation source are minimized it doesn't require adjust adjustment of the transmittances at 0% and 100% at each wavelength it gives ratio of intensities of sample and reference beams simultaneously ratios of intensity of the sample and reference beams simultaneously these are the advantages of single and double beam then what are the disadvantages disadvantages of single beam are any fluctuation in the intensity of the radiation sources affect the absorbance it affects the absorbance continuous spectrum is not obtained double beam construction is complicated and the instrument is expensive so at disadvantages of single beam is any fluctuation in the intensity of the radiation source occurs affects the absorbance okay and continuous spectrum is not obtained double beam construction is complicated and the instrument is expensive instrument is expensive then coming to the applications of visible spectroscopy applications of visible spectrophotometer is they are used for detection of impurities in the organic uh, molecules then structure elucidation of uh, organic compounds structure elucidation of organic compounds then quantitative analysis used for quant quantitative determination of compounds that absorbs uh, uh visible re radiation not uv it is visible radiation then qualitative analysis visible abs ab uh, absorption spectroscopy can characterize those types of compounds which absorb visible it is used for both quantitative and qualitative analysis and dissociation constants of acids and bases can also be found these are some of the application they are used for detection of impurities they use it for um, structure uh, elucidations of organic compounds and then qualitative and quantitative analysis dissociation constants of acids and bases both uv and visible they are used for qualitative as well as quantitative analysis dissociation constants of acids and bases can be carried out so to summarize what we have learned today we have understood the concepts of visible spectrophotometers we have understood the concepts of visible spectrophotometer in the, the basic components of uh, of visible spectrophotometers are uh, we have the um, components of visible spectrophotometers are source of radiant energy collimating system monochromatic system sample holder or container to hold the sample detector system of collecting transmitted radiation suitable amplifier or readout devices suitable amplifier or readout devices the construction consists of a, uh, um, it consists of a light source a collimating lens a dispersion element sample uh, detector and readout system 
in uh, for visible spectroscopy we are the light source commonly used is tungsten filament uh, tungsten halogen lamp is used then the collimating lenses uh, we are using the lenses made up of uh, uh, glass because it is used for in the uh, visible region then mirrors and slits are used then uh, we are using a, a monochromata either a prism or a grating can be used uh, prisms uh, then we have absorption filters uh, filters are used uh, interference filter is most commonly used in visible region and uh, the gr grating or mono uh, or uh, prism can be used as the monochromata and the sample holders or sample cells are made of uh, uh, glass they are made up of glass for the visible region and the uh, detectors most commonly used detectors are the photo tubes or photo multiplier tubes we are using in the visible spectrophotometers then the working principle visible spectrophotometers we have two types the single beam and the double beam spectrophotometers in the single beam the spectrophotometer when light uh, uh, when light from the radiant source that is the tungsten filament when it is co collected by the collimating lens and allowed to fall on the monochromata uh, it produces uh, radiation of single wavelength when this monochromatic light when it is passed through the sample which is placed in the cuvette some part of the radiation is absorbed and remaining is transmitted which passes through the focusing lens and falls in the photocell the photocell converts this radiation into current and optical density or absorbance uh, when coming to the um, uh, and when we plot a graph by taking absorbance on y axis and uh, wavelength on x axis uh, the value of the wavelength where the absorbance is maximum is known as lambda max and it is the characteristic property of the compound and gives the qualitative analysis of the sample while uh, while knowing the value of absorbance now you can know the value of absorbance by knowing the value of absorbance we can find out the concentration of the solution by using v beers lambert's law and this gives the qualitative analysis of the sample is possible then in the double beam spectrophotometer the only difference between a single beam and a double beam spectrometer is two beams are produced by using a beam splitter or a chopper uh, light from the source is collected by the collimating lens and allowed to fall on the monochromata the monochromata produces a radiation of a, uh, of single wavelength and it's uh, uh, this uh, monochromated light when it is separated into two beams with the help of a mirror or a beam splitter one beam is allowed to pass through the cuvette containing blank solution another is passed through the cuvette containing uh, sample solution when both the uh, uh, rays are allowed to incident finally both the uh, when uh, some part of the radiation is absorbed and remaining is transmitted and the transmitted radiation when it falls on to, uh, uh, through the focusing lens it falls on the detectors two detectors are used the, uh, the photo cell or a thermocouple whatever it may be two cells are used here so this pro they produce uh, they convert the incident light energy into current corresponding current and optical density or absorbance the value of the wavelength the lambda can be uh, changed by rotating the monochromata so for each each radiation you get each pattern different pattern for each radiation of, of a particular wavelength we get diff, uh, we get one pattern so you can plot a graph by taking uh, absorbance on x axis and uh, y axis and wavelength on x axis similar to the double single beam here also the value of the wavelength where the absorbance is maximum is known as lambda max uh, which is the characteristic property of the compound and it gives the qualitative analysis of the sample by knowing the value of absorbance you can know the concentration of the sample by using beers lambert's law where, where there exists a linear relationship between absorbance and concentration and thus the quantitative analysis of the sample is also possible here so this is about the two types of working principle of single beam and double beam uh, spectrophotometers visible spectrophotometers there are some advantages with single beam uh, it is simple and easy in construction and it is economical whereas when we come to the case of double beam it facilitates rapid scanning and its fluctuations due to radiation source are minimized in double beam and uh, it doesn't require any adjustment to transmittance for 0% and 100% wavelengths 
and uh, uh, there are some disadvantages with single beam continuous spectrum is not possible here and the, any fluctuation in the in intensity of the radiation source affects the absorbance and double beam construction is complicated and the instrument is expensive. Then coming to the applications, they are used for detection of impurities in organic molecules, structure elucidation of organic compounds, both in qualitative and quantitative analysis of compounds and they are used to find the dissociation constants of acids and bases. So, with this,